Welcome to Trumpet Momentum, Volume 5. Today we are discussing oral cavity. And I'll get up a little closer so we can discuss really what I'm uh, referring to, which is the space inside your mouth. And in the Trumpet Momentum program and in my book, I have drawings of the oral cavity. And these originated from uh, the work of other people before me. So I've read pretty much every trumpet book that's ever been written. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there. Unfortunately, there's a lot of misleading information. And uh, when it comes to oral cavity, there's a lot of confusion, primarily because people have different ways of playing. When somebody says, this is the one way to do it, then it's probably not. Uh, what I've learned over the years is thousands of different players have variations on all the fundamental principles. If you use a lot of mouthpiece pressure, you may leave out a lot of the physics principles that should be present in uh, a great working embouchure. But you can still produce results. You just may be missing uh, wide flexibility and range. And what I mean by that is you may be able to play high and loud, but maybe you can't play low, or maybe you can't play high and soft. Uh, so those are things that might be missing in your trumpet playing and uh, we all want to be honest with ourselves and just assess and say what can I do and what can't I do and uh, just because you can play high notes loud does not mean you're a great trumpet player. If you want full facility of the instrument you'll be uh, able to slow uh, slur from a pedal C up to double or maybe even triple high C but at least double high C uh, for the vast majority of players. Uh, not that we need to use that every day, but it should be something that you can do quite easily. And uh, oral cavity has been discussed in great length online um, as various techniques. One of, is, one of them is the uh, Tongue Controlled Embouchure, TCE. And uh, I'm good friends with Jerry Callett. I've known him for years. Uh, I don't see him very often, but he has great ideas and they do work. Uh, what I propose is something that's more balanced, so it's different. It's not just for high plane, it's for everything. And uh, I believe that the oral cavity should adjust as you play higher for two reasons. The first is the physics of brass instruments is such that as we play higher, the volume of the instrument needs to get smaller. And the only way it can really get smaller is if uh, you were to shorten the instrument. But you can't, or can you? If you're making your tongue go up or squeezing the inside of your mouth so that you have smaller and smaller oral cavity, the instrument is in fact getting shorter, which uh, would adjust for uh, some of the intonation issues on most trumpets. However, I build trumpets with all different size bells. Some of you playing very large bells have discovered that you may need to move your oral cavity more drastically than uh, you would on other bells. So this is a huge topic and we'll dive into it just briefly today in the Trumpet Momentum uh, program then the chapter on this is quite a bit longer because there's so much to it and we come back to it a couple different times. Basically what you want to do today is uh, reduce the size of the air volume inside your mouth as you play higher. So if I'm playing from low to high, imagine this is the oral cavity inside my mouth and my thumb is my tongue. I can raise and lower things. Obviously this isn't the best illustration, but it's something. Um, so you want to raise your tongue as you go higher. And you want to do that, let's just use this as my tongue. If you're raising it as you're going higher, that's going to do um, two things. It's going to speed up your airstream because you can eventually make a small trough with your tongue against the roof of your mouth, which speeds the air up before it gets to your lips. So that aids in playing higher. Uh, and then of course it's going to make the cavity itself smaller. Uh, so what you want to do is as you're playing a certain note, start to move your tongue around. I would start on a G in the staff. That's my normal G. Now I should go back a second. I was always taught in all my classical trumpet lessons with all the principal and co-principal orchestra players that I should play with my tongue as low as possible to have the biggest, broadest tone. Well, to some extent that's true. Uh, there are other ways to create a big, broad tone. Um, but 
Today what we're doing is, for your low notes, you're playing with your tongue low. So on a G, my tongue is very low. And then I want you to force it to go up while you're on the G. See what happened there? As I pushed it up, I popped up to the C. I'm going to do it again. Now think to yourself, why does that happen? And uh, try it again, now do it on the C. All right, I am not physically moving my lips to a different uh, aperture setting. Uh, it's happening because of my tongue. So today, I want you to try that. And then rather than practicing a lot of, of uh, this exercise, I just want you to try it. And if that happens to you, then think about why, and we'll come back and hit this again on Monday.